trying to be a mirror to the person so they can see themselves. Um, you, you try to reflect a person who's calm, cooperative, uh, has their voice under control, minimize uh, gestures, movements, and things like that. Uh, because somebody who is already out of control and maybe uh, feeling threatened for somebody to, you know, make a big gesture or something like that, it's just going to startle them. And you've lost all of the calmness that you've worked so hard to build. Uh, be on the same eye level with the person. A kid's not going to calm down for somebody who's looking down at them. Try to, you know, you know, get down on your knees or something like that so that you're on the same eye level with them. Uh, you don't get too close, though. Um, I always say two, two arm length away from the person. You know, if, if they want to close that distance, that's okay, but you give them their personal space. You don't stand between them and the door. Um, uh, you also don't let them stand between you and the door. Um, try not to argue. Um, many of the parents out there will know uh, their kid. They'll recognize their kid because they will try and suck them into an absolutely nonsensical argument. You're no longer working on what the issue is. And these kids are great at diversion. So uh, giving them an exercise to do where um, you overload that system. Um, where you give them something to to drink, uh, something to eat, so they have to be leaving what they were upset about just to have something to drink. Or you can ask them to do breathing exercises or something like that, asking questions. Uh, also, get them divert, to divert from uh, being overwhelmed by emotions to rationalized storytelling. You tell them you you know you want to hear their narrative, you want to hear about them what they're going through, and uh, most most people just love that they want to they want people to be interested in them and to care about what they're thinking and feeling.